and hello YouTube, this is GS Man Smart, and I'm going to bring a video for Gaming with GS. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you another quick method to make easy gold in Guild Wars 2, and this is going to be a method that does require you to have Heart of Thorns, so hopefully you have it because this is a, a really good method to make gold. In fact, I think you can get like a good 7-8 gold per hour. Uh, it's heavily dependent on what type of loot you get at the end of the event. Uh, however, you can be a little cheeky and, uh, you know, just pop in when the event is about to end. And you can just use your keys to open the chests. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the Arc Basin event chain. It's basically the meta event. And before the meta event, there's a bunch of event chains you can do, which will help progress your participation in the map. And you'll get more loot. If you're out of the loop, basically, Arc Basin is one of the new maps in Heart of Thorns, and you're basically able to go to this map. And there are four regions in this map there's a north region, there's a south region, there is a west and a east region. And each of these regions has a different chain of events that you can complete. Um, they vary depending on what side you're on. Some of them will have you uh, complete escort missions. Some of them will have you uh, complete defense missions, and others will just have you kill a bunch of stuff. But they're very similar, you're basically trying to activate pylons, which are these big giant statues, and there's three pylons in each region of the map. So in total there are 12 pylons in the entire map, and each region is responsible for activating three pylons. So north will have to activate three, south will have to activate three, east and west will both have to activate three as well. And that's where the event chain comes in. Now, in the more events that you participate in, and usually you just have to stick with one region, there's usually a commander at every region. And on the footage you'll see now that I'm wearing the uh, purple tag, and I am uh, leading the uh, south region. And just follow a commander there, or if you're commanding, you know, go to a region and get a squad ready. And... Uh, just follow the event chain. It's very easy to get your uh, participation in the map up to 200% just by staying in the event chain. Uh, the higher participation you have, the more events you've participated in, and the more you've done of that, you'll basically get more loot, you'll get more of the map's currency token tokens, which is Aurelium, I think it is. And the more Aurelium you have, the more exalted keys you'll get. And the more exalted keys you'll get, the more chests you'll be op you'll be able to open at the end of the meta event. So the pre-events and the event chains are pretty simple. I've already explained. And uh, what will happen is that the, the the content is a little it's a little difficult. If you're running Zerker gear, uh, you'll probably be downed a lot. I'm running full Zerker gear, and you'll see that I actually uh, get downed. Uh, quite a bit throughout the uh, throughout the event chains, but for the most part, if you have some toughness, you should be fine. It's a very uh, interactive uh, map. I really like Arc Basin. It's probably one of the best maps to farm for gold. Uh, Verdant Brink is nice too, but I just feel like you get tons more loot in Arc Basin and in Tangled Deaths. I've tried going in there, I didn't really like the feel of the map, and I heard the meta event is really hard, and then for a Dragon Stand, I haven't even done that yet. But, so Arc Basin is, is, is a really a favorite right here, and uh, not only do you get chests at the end of the meta event, but there's also a daily boss that you can kill. If you have the fourth level of the Exalted Mastery track, you're able to also kill the daily boss and get the uh, daily chest as well. I don't know what the chest holds at, I don't have the uh, mastery track yet, but I have heard that it's similar to the uh, exalted chests. If anyone in the comments knows what the uh, daily chest in Arc Basin contains, uh, definitely leave it in the comments below and I'll see if I can add an annotation if you have completed it yet. But aside from that, basically after you've completed the event chains after each region, has completed their three pylons. You know, if one region finishes earlier, then you could hop over to another another region, uh, which actually benefits you because you'll get more experience towards your mastery points. You'll get more Aurelium, and you'll get more map participation. 
So you can either stick with your region or you can hop around to different regions. Either way, you'll probably most likely get 200% map participation. So after all the pylons have been completed, you're basically going to transition into another phase of the map, which is the uh, challenges phase. And each region of the map, once again, south, north, east, and west, they all have uh, different mini games that you can uh, co compete in. The uh, south will have a race that you can compete in. Whoever gets to the top of the mountain first will be the winner of that. The east will have a brawler, sort of arena-style PvP type of thing going. Sort of like the a costume brawl for Halloween, but um, with only three skills. And the uh, north will have, I think, I think north has a, uh, has the, um, it's like a soccer game. You have to shoot mushrooms at like, at a specific uh, mob, and then it's not like soccer. It's like more like kickball, I guess. Um, so you have that, and uh, whoever hits the uh, mob three times with uh, kicking mushrooms basically wins that. And then west, you have a bidding game where you're bidding for. A uh, exalted armor and all these challenges are basically there to help you get a really cool high tier exalted armor set uh, it's not an armor set that you can equip to yourself it's basically just uh, something you can hop into like a golem you can hop into and you basically have a hundred and thirty one thousand health depending on how much vitality you have sometimes you have more but you'll have over a hundred thousand health and um, you'll basically have these new skills which will aid you in killing the main boss in the uh, meta event in the Forgotten City of Tahrir, which you'll be defending and trying to save uh, when the meta event starts. So for the first prize, I, I'd say for the first half an hour, you're doing the you're doing the chain events. Then for your next 15 minutes, you're doing those challenges, and then maybe for the next 15 minutes after that you're doing the big meta event. So maybe in an hour to maybe an hour and a half, uh, you can profit to about 10 gold to about 11 gold. You'll see near the end of the video when I sell all my stuff that I actually came up with uh, 11 gold, over 11 gold, and uh, some of the stuff I did deposit into my bank. And um, so, you know, you, you, it's, it's a ton of money you can make really. It's probably one of the best ways currently I know of that I find enjoyable to make uh, gold. Uh, if you're not flipping TPs or doing promotions or other stuff like that. So once you uh, you can take part in any challenge and basically what these challenges will do, give you the armor set and you can go in the armor and you'll use it for defending Tahrir. Now each of these challenges are different and you cannot par participate in more than one challenge. Uh, technically you could, but you'll basically waste your armor that you just got, your exalted armor. And it is better than the regular exalted armor that you can pick up that everyone else can pick up when, they're, when you're defending the city. So uh, it is pretty valuable, I guess, if you're into using the armors. But um, these these challenges that you complete also give you achievements. So if you want to you know, unlock a lot of the achievements, you'll need to do some of these challenges. I know there's an achievement for like uh, winning first place in every region's challenge and, uh, winning, uh, and uh, winning a certain amount of uh, challenges in the entire map. So there's lots of achievements in this map. There's also, th there'll be a certain time frame that you have to wait between between challenges and between doing the chain events. There'll be a, a certain time, a small amount of time frame you have to wait. And um, there you can do some of the hero points or some of the uh, other achievement bosses that roam the map that you'll also be able to complete. So the map has a lot to offer. I really like it. It's probably one of my favorite maps so far. Like I said, I have not done Dragon Stand yet, so I cannot uh, judge it completely, yet, but Arc Basin is definitely uh, a favorable map for me. So after you've done the challenges, after you've done your hero points, after you've done the achievement bosses, and if you have any questions, I mean, you could definitely leave in the comments, but um, a lot of people in map chat will basically tell you, oh, I'm doing Vine Tooth right now, or I'm gonna be doing this hero point over here, or, you know, South region needs one more pylon if anyone wants to help or whatever. Just just stay active on map chat because um, there will be a lot of uh, discussion going on there. If you're in a squad like you see right now, I have a squad right now. Eventually you'll see it get bigger throughout the video. Throughout the video. Uh, you can always ask the commander there or anybody else in the, or anybody else in the squad that uh, may have knowledge of the map more than you do. And um, so once you finish all of that, 
the main event for Tarir will basically start. And once again, each region is different. You have to basically kill an Octavine, which is the main boss in each region. Each region will have an Octavine. And the way you kill this Octavine is different for each region. So South region will have a different way of killing their Octavine than North region will. And then East and West region will as well. So here's where the Exalted Armors come into play. If you've completed a challenge and you got first place in that challenge, then you basically have this high tier Exalted Armor. If you didn't complete the challenge or you couldn't complete it because you do need the first Exalted Mastery track to enter the challenges, and uh, if you and you basically need it to to basically traverse the map with the uh, armors as well. But if you didn't get first place or you didn't bother to do the challenges, but you have the first Exalted Mastery track, you can also hop into one of the already placed Exalted armor. I think there's like five or four of them in front of each gate. But you'll see the map is divided into four regions, and there's basically a gate into the middle city on each side of the map, top, bottom, left, and right. And in front of these gates, there'll be exalted armor. So you can hop into one of those if you didn't get one of the high tier ones, but you don't need to hop into one of these. Basically, the goal of these armors is to stun the big mobs that are going to be in the city and to CC them so they don't wreck over your people that are on the ground and to basically push the bombs out of the path that people are trying to uh, follow to either complete some of the objectives to kill the Octavine. So as an exalted armor person you're here mainly to defend everyone on the ground. You do have a 5 skill that heavily revives, that basically completely reses, there's no like waiting for the health to go, you completely automatically res uh, the, the, the person in the area with your 5 skill and you also have attacks and stuff like that so it's not fully defense you do have some offensive stuff but mainly you're there to CC and to uh, push the bombs out of the way from in the path and if you're not in an exalted armor you're basically doing these little objectives that each region differs in south will basically have to use the knockbacks and uh and pushes and you know CC that moves things to push a bomb along a path till it reaches the other end of of the path and it explodes on the octavine and you need to do this three times each bomb will basically take away five protection layers of slime and each octavine in each region has 15 so your region will have 15 protection layers of slime and each bomb in south will take away five so you need to do this three times I need to use CC to move the bomb along the path and basically explode it at the end to hit the Octavine to take five protection layers of slime off. Uh, East will have a similar thing, but their method is basically to uh, get these seeds that are like bombs from the top of a stairway, and you're supposed to glide down with an updraft and throw the bombs on top of the Octavine while you're gliding in the air. And that's probably the easiest one to do. I think it's also the one of the most fun ones to do, especially if you like gliding. You know, you, you're able to fly over the uh, you're able to fly over the city, not over the entire city, but over the little region there, and uh, throw bombs down. So east is pretty easy. South, which I already explained, happens to be one of the harder ones that people tend to struggle with, and you know, with good reason. Not every class has the most uh, push pushes or uh, knockbacks to CC the bomb uh, along the path, but um. That's south and east. North will have, I think it's, I always get north and west confused. One of them you have to turn into a little ooze, and you basically then have to traverse the path to the other side and basically uh, affect the uh, octavine and slowly bring down the slime layers through uh, transforming into an ooze and then uh, hitting the uh, octavine. And then the other one, I think it's, it may be north or, north or west, I can't remember uh, which one has which but the other one you basically have to pick up a uh, you have to pick up an item and you have to go across the path and then in front of the octavine you have to use your two skill to place down a turret and then you have to use that turret to shoot at the octavine and you know the more people get the turrets the more people set the turrets down successfully and shoot at the octavine the quicker you'll get the uh, slimes down and uh, each of these slime layers decreases by one, except for south, which decreases by five for every bomb you successfully 
uh, get to the other side. So seems easy enough, but the difficult one of the difficult part. But um, one thing you have to watch out for, be aware, is that all octavines, all four octavines in each region, each region has one. All four of them need to be killed at the exact same time within a certain time frame. So if South kills their octavine. East, North, and West have to kill it at the same time. Well, not the same time, but within a time frame of like two minutes or so. And um, that can sometimes fail, but I think at this point in the expansion, everyone's done it a few times. So usually the people who don't understand it can usually be explained in map chat or in their squad of how to do things. But most of the time it succeeds. So usually what happens is uh, if, if, one, if one region gets really low, gets their Octavine really low, they'll basically uh, get it down to like five layers of slime or three layers of slime, and then they'll wait for the other regions. Some people will help the other regions. And once all regions are really low, their Octavine's health is really low, then everyone is basically gonna start attacking at the same time and everyone basically kills the Octavines um, relatively within the uh, time frame. Now in the footage you'll see that I, I actually am there for most of the fight, but I end up dying in the last second uh, when we're, when we're uh, burning all the Octavines together, but uh, you do still get event credit as long as you do some damage, as long as you participate and uh, get some attacks on the Octavine. So it's not too difficult to uh, ensure that you get participation in it. But um, aside from that, once you clear all the Octavines, uh, the meta event's completed. Even if you fail the meta event, say one region messes up where you don't have enough people, uh, the, one of the main reasons why this event fails a lot is because there's not enough people in the map. You, you really need to taxi people in, make sure that you have a full map, because this is a difficult meta event, but it's not difficult if you have a lot of people and if people know what they're doing. If you have an empty map and you don't, you don't have a lot of people, it can be a little harder. So make sure you're taxiing people in. And um, once you have the meta event completed, or if you failed the meta event, depending on how many Octavines you killed, in the city, underground in the city, which you'll see me uh, traversing to right now, you'll basically have rooms open, and um, these rooms will basically allow you to loot the exalted chests and the great exalted chests. If you happen to save the city completely and not fail the event, you're able to loot the grand exalted chests, which are the which are the giant chests, which have a relatively more and better loot than uh, the smaller chests and the great chests. Now before you do this, you can also kill the uh, traitor, which is the daily bot, which is the daily uh, chest giver. You can kill the, the little boss there and then you can get the daily chest. Um, but it does give you experience, so may as well participate in the event even if you don't have the mastery to unlock the chest. After you've done that, you can go in these rooms and like I said, depending on how many Octavines you killed, if you completed the event, everything's unlocked. If, if one of your Octavines didn't get killed, you'll have access to all the rooms except for the last one. And each room basically has a grand exalted chest except for the first one. The first one only has small and greats. But every room after that has a grand exalted chest. So as you open these, you'll find blues, greens, yellows. You will find exotics. I have found exotics in these chests before. And, you know, the they give you pretty good stuff. Some of the uh, materials that you get, like uh, orbs, like I think it's ebony orb, some of the uh, upgrade components, some of the uh, crafting components you get do tend to sell for a lot. Specifically the black diamond, which you'll see I'll get at the very end, the last chest, which I, I was thankful for because I thought I wasn't, I wasn't going to get a black diamond. I usually get a black diamond, I usually get one within, within each run of this uh, meta event. So you should, you'll probably get one black diamond too. Uh, maybe you'll get one every two runs, but I'm tending to get one every run. So I got my black diamond at the very end, the last chest, and this black diamond sells for four gold. If you're not needing it to craft, if you're not needing it for a for a guild contribution, I'm not sure black diamonds are needed. I'm guessing they're needed though, because they're selling for high and people are buying them. But uh, you know, if you if you're low on gold and you need gold, and you don't need it to use it for anything else then uh, definitely you can sell them. I've been selling them. I haven't even looked up what they're used for. I just, you know, I need gold. <laughs> so um, I've been selling them for four gold and the rest of the stuff, that's basically where 
a quarter of your profit comes from from that one black diamond. But if you don't happen to get a black diamond, you still make it would make seven eight gold, which is still a really good amount of gold for the time that you spend in this map. And um, in theory, if you think back when dungeons were around, dungeons used to give us like how much? They gave us like one gold per dungeon run, which was a dungeon run was like maybe fifteen minutes, and they gave us one to two gold. So if anything, you're making the same amount or maybe even more if you sell all your materials and don't deposit anything than you would by doing dungeons. You're probably making more gold than you would by doing a doing an hour worth of dungeon or an hour and a half worth of dungeon. You're making more gold in here than you would be in dungeons. So I think it's a, it's a great event. So apart from getting black diamonds, apart from getting some rares that you can sell or salvage for ectoplasms, apart from getting some of the ascended materials that you need for your guild hall, uh, apart from those things, you can also get recipe books for the new stat types, and those are pretty good too. I've collected a few of them already. Uh, they give you ascended recipe books. They also give you the exotic recipe books. And be aware, these you can only get from uh, from these events. They're not anywhere else in the game. So if you want to get the viper or the minstrel or the uh, some of the new stat types, here is where you get them from in this map from these chests. <clears throat> So along with that, you know, you do have a bunch of loot boxes that you get and you'll see right now that I'm mainly trying to uh, salvage stuff and sell things in my inventory. And um, I think I forgot to mention when you're doing the uh, chest opening, there's also a hero point in there that you can only get if you successfully save the city. You also have a ton of these bags, a ton of champion bags, a ton of the map the map boxes and the map bags that it that it gives you you know the more events that you've participated in uh the more chests you'll have because the map will have four tiers each each map will have a certain amount of tiers and every time you get to a halfway mark or i think it's a quarter mark every time you get to a specific mark within a tier you get a chest and every time you reach a tier you also get a chest and every time you complete the meta event you get a a, a giant chest and they all they all appear on the right side of the screen so you have a ton of these bags that you can open and they'll give you even more loot that you can salvage or sell and which will basically give you even more items and a higher and a higher amount of gold gain from the entire meta event so you'll see that i i tend to make around uh 9 10 11 gold um if you get an exotic you can easily make over 10 gold otherwise you probably make around 10 9 gold margin if you don't get a black diamond you'll probably make around eight seven gold but it's a fun event i really like it and uh, it's pretty interactive you can meet some cool people too a map chat or in your squad if people are chatty uh, my squad wasn't very chatty i've commanded this map several times though and i've met some people that are pretty cool and um you know great map though and that's basically the method you know i just wanted to explain to you guys for those of you who didn't know the method hopefully this video was helpful this was sort of like an arc basin guide too um but um it is a great gold method and uh for the other gold methods that i have right now i do need to update some of them i know that the dungeon one isn't very viable anymore i'm also gonna try to edit the like edit the names of the other ones and edit the descriptions and add annotations for those that aren't viable anymore um you know, the, those that aren't the best viable anymore, like dungeons, those aren't like completely viable anymore. You can do those and still get gold, but they're not as effective uh, time-wise as some of the other methods that are out there that I have covered. So I'll be uh, trying to edit that playlist in the future. But um, that's pretty much for the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is a great map for experience. Leveling your mastery is a great place to, you know, group with people, a great place to get hero points great place for loot great place for achievements as well there's tons of achievements in here and um overall a great place to make some gold if you're low on gold but um if you if you're interested in some other gold methods i do have them in my playlist you should see a link in the description also an annotation and a card on the screen right now you can click that if you're interested apart from that we're making more guild wars 2 videos in the future so if you haven't subscribed yet Please do so if you're liking the content. And and that'll be it for this video. This is GS Man Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.
Thank you for watching. I hope that this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment below as well and give some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well. And I usually try my best to answer those comments within the next 24 to 48 hours, depending on how busy I am. I also have plenty of other content on my channel about different gaming tutorials, as well as general gaming videos for Guild Wars 2, League of Legends, Minecraft, and any others that you may be interested in. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. And if you like what you see, you can subscribe too. Would really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social medias as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much, everyone. And this is GS Man Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.